Today is January the 8th. Today, we read about the Akeda Isaac. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read Genesis 22 to 24. Now we have two very interesting stories here in these three chapters. First of all, in Genesis 22, um, <clears throat> God tests Abraham. He says, Abraham, you know that I promised uh, that your descendants would come through Isaac. Are you willing to offer Isaac to me? And he asks Abraham to take Isaac, take some fire, take a knife, take fire, um, um, kindling, and uh, go up on a mountain and there sacrifice his son. Abraham does this. Now it's interesting. Isaac is old enough that he carries all the wood. He is not a child anymore. Um, he may be a young teenager. He is at least old enough to be able to carry the wood up uh, to the top of a mountain. Um, when they get there, as you will read in the story, uh, an angel of the Lord stops Abraham and says, no, 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 I just wanted to see if you were willing. Look behind you, and they see a ram caught in a thicket, and um, they sacrifice the ram instead. Now, part of the point of the story, certainly, to test Abraham's faith. But we see something about Isaac as well. Uh, Abraham binds Isaac. Isaac is old enough to carry the wood up the side of a mountain. He would certainly have been old enough to resist his father, who by now was over a hundred years old. The Inner Testament um, literature uh, from the time period a uh, few hundred years before Jesus goes wild with this topic. Uh, they talk about, uh, they, they give uh, Isaac um, uh, sermons that he preaches saying, uh, I wouldn't be worthy to be called your son if I disobeyed you. Uh, they make Isaac a very willing participant in this sacrifice. In fact, there's an entire theology that develops out of this called the Akeda Isaac in Hebrew, the binding of Isaac. Now in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 verse 1, we see that the mountain on which this took place, Mount Moriah, is indeed Jerusalem years later. The mountain itself I just wonder if uh, this wasn't dead on, if not very near to the place that by the New Testament is called Golgotha, where another son was sacrificed by his father for us. Now, um, the New Testament does make a point of saying that Jesus, too, was a willing participant of his own sacrifice. In fact, we see exactly that in the Garden of Gethsemane, as John records it, where Jesus says, I don't want to do this. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine. And so, uh, we have this wonderful story of Akeda Isaac. The second story is Eliezer going to find a wife for Isaac, a beautiful story full of cultural happenings, cultural cues, but uh, the bottom line is Isaac will be uh, the uh, uh, line of the nation that will come from Abraham. Eliezer ensures that Isaac will have a wife. Enjoy today. 
as you read Genesis 22 to 24. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, I am here. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped the wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of the journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood of the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said. But where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide the sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered. And they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up a knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yira, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says, Because you have obeyed me, and not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. Then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Beersheba, where Abraham continued to live. Soon after this, Abraham heard that Milcah, his brother Nahor's wife, had borne Nahor eight sons. The oldest was named Uz, the next oldest was Buz, followed by Kimuel, the ancestor of the Arameans, Kizid, Hazo, Pildash, Jiblab, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. In addition to these eight sons from Milcah, Nahor had four other children from his concubine Reuma. Their names were Teba, Geham, Tehash, and Meekah. When Sarah was 127 years old, she died at Kiriath Arba, now called Hebron, in the land of Canaan. There Abraham mourned and wept for her. Then, leaving her body, he said to the Hittite elders, Here I am, a stranger and a foreigner among you. Please sell me a piece of land so I can give my wife a proper burial. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen, my lord, you are an honored prince among us. Choose the finest of our tombs and bury her there. No one here will refuse to help you in this way. Then Abraham bowed low before the Hittites and said, Since you are willing to help me in this way, be so kind as to ask Ephron son of Zohar to let me buy his cave at Machpelah, down at the end of his field. I will pay the full price in the presence of witnesses, so I will have a permanent burial place for my family. Ephron was sitting there among the others, and he answered Abraham as the others listened, speaking publicly before all the Hittite elders of the town. No, my lord, he said to Abraham, please listen to me. I will give the field to you and the cave. Here in the presence of my people, I give it to you. Go and bury your dead. Abraham again bowed low before the citizens of the land, and he replied to Ephron as everyone listened, No, listen to me. I will buy it from you. Let me pay the full price for the field so I can bury my dead there. 
Ephron answered Abraham, My lord, please listen to me. The land is worth four hundred pieces of silver, but what is that between friends? Go ahead and bury your dead. So Abraham agreed to Ephron's price and paid the amount he had suggested. Four hundred pieces of silver weighed according to the market standard. The Hittite elders witnessed the transaction, so Abraham bought the plot of land belonging to Ephron at Mechphilah near Mamre. This included the field itself, the cave that was on it, and all the surrounding trees. It was transferred to Abraham as his permanent possession in the presence of the Hittite elders at the city gate. Then Abraham buried his wife, Sarah, there in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, also called Hebron. So the field and the cave were transferred from the Hittites to Abraham for use as a permanent burial place. Abraham was now a very old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, Take an oath by putting your hand under my right thigh. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Instead, go to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. The servant asked, But what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? No, Abraham responded, Be careful never to take my son there, for the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. If she is unwilling to come back with you, then you are free from this oath of mine. But under no circumstance are you to take my son there. So the servant took an oath by putting his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham. He swore to follow Abraham's instructions. Then he loaded ten of Abraham's camels with all kinds of expensive gifts from his master, and he traveled to distant Aram Naharam, where he went to the town where Abraham's brother Nahor had settled. He made the camels kneel beside a well just outside the town. It was evening, and the women were coming out to draw water. O Lord, God of my master Abraham, he prayed, please give me success today, and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here beside this spring, and the young women from the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels too, let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master." Before he had finished praying, he saw a young woman named Rebekah coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, who was the son of Abraham's brother Nahor and his wife Milcah. Rebekah was very beautiful and old enough to be married, but she was still a virgin. She went down to the spring, filled her jug, and came up again. Running over to her, the servant said, "'Please give me a little drink of water from your jug.' "'Yes, Lord,' she answered, "'have a drink.' And she quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and gave him a drink. When she had given him a drink, she said, "'I'll draw water for your camels, too, until they have had enough to drink.' So she quickly emptied her jug into the watering trough and ran back to the well to draw water for all his camels. The servant watched her in silence, wondering whether or not the Lord had given him success in his mission. Then, at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he took out a gold ring for her nose and two large gold bracelets for her wrist. "'Whose daughter are you?' he asked. "'And please tell me, would your father have any room to put us up for the night?' I am the daughter of Bethuel, she replied. My grandparents are Nahor and Milcah. Yes, we have plenty of straw and feed for the camels, and we have room for guests. The man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, he said. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master, for he has led me straight to my master's relatives. The young woman ran home to tell her family everything that had happened. 
Now Rebecca had a brother named Laban who ran out to meet the man at the spring. He had seen the nose ring and bracelets on his sister's wrist, and had heard Rebecca tell what the man had said. So he rushed out to the spring, where the man was still standing beside his camels. Laban said to him, Come on and stay with us, you who are blessed by the Lord. Why are you standing here outside the town, when I have a room all ready for you, and a place prepared for the camels? So the man went home with Laban, and Laban unloaded the camels, gave him straw for their bedding, fed them, and provided water for the man and the camel drivers to wash their feet. Then the food was served. But Abraham's servant said, I don't want to eat until I have told you why I have come. All right, Laban said, tell us. I am Abraham's servant, he explained, and the Lord has greatly blessed my master. He has become a wealthy man. The Lord has given him flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, a fortune in silver and gold, and many male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. When Sarah, my master's wife, was very old, she gave birth to my master's son, and my master has given him everything he owns. And my master made me take an oath. He said, Do not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my father's house, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son. But I said to my master, What if I can't find a young woman who is willing to go back with me? He responded, The Lord, in whose presence I have lived, will send his angel with you and make your mission successful. Yes, you must find a wife for my son among my relatives from my father's family. Then you will have fulfilled your oath. But if you go to my relatives and they refuse to let her go with you, you will be free from my oath. So today, when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer. O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success on this mission. See, I am standing beside this spring. This is my request. When a young woman comes to draw water, I will say to her, Please give me a little water to drink from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink, and I will draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected to be the wife of my master's son. Before I had finished praying in my heart, I saw Rebecca coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, Please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, Yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels too. So I drank, and then she watered the camels. Then I asked, Whose daughter are you? She replied, I am the daughter of Bethuel, and my grandparents are Nahor and Milcah. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist. Then I bowed low and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, because he led me straight to my master's niece to be his son's wife. So tell me, will you or won't you show unfailing love and faithfulness to my master? Please tell me yes or no, and then I will know what to do next. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The Lord has obviously brought you here, so there is nothing we can say. Here is Rebecca, take her and go. Yes, let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard their answer, he bowed down to the ground and worshipped the Lord. Then he brought out silver and gold jewelry and clothing and presented them to Rebekah. He also gave expensive presents to her brother and mother. Then they ate their meal, and the servant and the men with him stayed there overnight. But early the next morning, Abraham's servant said, Send me back to my master. But we want Rebekah to stay with us at least ten days, her brother and mother said. Then she can go. But, he said, Don't delay me. The Lord has made my mission successful. Now send me back so I can return to my master. Well, they said, We'll call Rebekah and ask her what she thinks. So they called Rebekah. Are you willing to go with this man? they asked her. And she replied, Yes, I will go. So they said goodbye to Rebecca and sent her away with Abraham's servant and his men. The woman who had been Rebecca's childhood nurse went along with her. They gave her this blessing as she parted. Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. May your descendants be strong and conquer the cities of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her servant girls mounted the camels and followed the man. 
So Abraham's servant took Rebekah and went on his way. Meanwhile, Isaac, whose home was in the Negev, had returned from Bir Lahairoi. One evening, as he was walking and meditating in the fields, he looked up and saw the camels coming. When Rebekah looked up and saw Isaac, she quickly dismounted from her camel. Who is that man walking through the fields to meet us? she asked the servant. And he replied, It is my master. So Rebekah covered her face with her veil. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done, and Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother Sarah's tent, and she became his wife. He loved her deeply, and she was a special comfort to him after the death of his mother. Scripture reading by Amelia Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see the story of Isaac.